Exactly seven days ago, Heidelin Diaz carried an Olympic record, lifted an Olympic record of 224 kilograms. And uh, of course, giving the Philippines its first ever gold medal in the Olympics. Hello, online world. Hello, Ka OTR. This is our season four, and we will have our first ever Philippine gold medalist, Heidelin Diaz, on the show. This is Migs Bustos together with. Cheska Litton Kalao. And of course, Migs, when you were talking about what happened seven days ago, I know na hindi lang tayo yung naiyak when we heard the national anthem for the uh, playing in the Olympics, when we saw the Philippine flag being raised. So, of course, our guest for this episode is none other than Heidelin Diaz with. Coach Julius Naranjo. Thank you so much, Team HD. Coach Julius. And the Heidelin, wow, it is an honor for you guys to be here. Heidelin, just want to ask you first, kamusta after all the dust has settled, and daming interviews, and daming papre. Well, I would call, <laughs> I would lack of a better term, papre, or maybe support from all the sectors sa Pilipinas. Kamusta, how are you now? Um, sa kahapon, tanggap ko na. Pero no, tanggap ko na na gold medalist ko sa Olympics, sa Tokyo 2020 Olympics. Um, tapos natanggap ko na rin na ito, ito, itong realidad ko and masabi ko lang na of course my responsibility after nung glory and tanggap ko rin yun then medyo na overwhelm ako sa lahat ng um, prices na na pledge sana po ibigay lahat thank you so much po <laughs> uh, thank you so much and um Yung sa akin kasi, as an athlete, um, hindi ako nagpo-focus sa material things. Um, hindi din sa prices or incentives. Ginawa ko kasi ito dahil gusto kong magbigay ng inspirasyon, um, pag-asa sa bawat Pilipino ngayong pandemic. Kaya sabi ko, hindi ako pwede mag-give up. And also, this is our dream, together with the Team HD, na ginagawa namin to kasi gusto namin patunayan na kaya nating mga Pilipino. Uh, Heidi, you mentioned na tanggap mo na yung mga responsibilities that come with being an Olympic gold medalist. What are those responsibilities and how do those, uh, for Coach Julius, how do those responsibilities translate to Team HD as well? Heidi, you want to go first? Um, para sa akin kasi na-experience ko na ito. Um, dahil after Rio Olympics, um, uh, nanalo ako, di ba? May mga, um, you're welcome. Pero ngayon, siyempre, kakaiba lang ngayon kasi medyo naging um, nanalo ako ng goal tapos kailangan ng inspirasyon ng bawat isa nating bawat isang Pilipino. So, ayun, yun ang naging, sa tingin ko, naging inspir- um, um, responsibility ko sa Pilipino during this pandemic. Uh, Coach Julius? Um, I think... The responsibility is to just um, really showcase the importance of uh, sports sciences and having a good relationship with your athlete, being able to communicate and collaborate with your peers. Um, I think those are some of the things that we wanted to really um, showcase. And also just being a good example. We want to lead by example. We want to be great um, example to people who are in our field. Uh, in the sports science field are people who want to get into it. Um, I think it's it's important to note that it's it's not just um, it's not just you know getting all of the degrees but also applying what you learn and being able to to communicate very well and to work together with um, your athletes. Mm-hmm. And that's I think what would be the importance. Now um, of course as of this as of airing this interview it's been a couple of days now that uh, Heidi Team HD has been through so much interviews. 14 interviews, sabi ni Heidi, on the first day from 6 a.m. until 11 p.m. And that is the kind of responsibility, oh, wow. you know, that it brings, you know, when it comes to the gold medal. And I'm sure marami na rin natanong ang mga, ang mga anchors natin, ang mga interviewers natin. But hopefully for this episode, we will give you a fresh perspective, or maybe some more behind the scenes on what it's like. Julius, uh, Coach Julius, I want to stick with you. Um, of course, that last attempt, right, on the clean and jerk, and you know, going after record after record, pataasan eh, 
right? Um, what was the, can you take us through that moment on the final attempt before Heidi went out? What was the atmosphere like it, with your team? I think I think we at this point it was do or die. Um, we know that the, her opponent is very strong. She's a world record holder, um, and um, a part of me saw that she wasn't in her best um, shape, and I think it's probably due to injuries. But of course, I don't let that secure us the medal. I think what we what we knew was that Heidi is here to to play after one twenty three was it or one twenty four. Mm-hmm. Um, we basically just said this is our last attempt you know whatever we get we we secured our our medal because we always talked about it and heidi always mentioned you know secure the medal first and whatever medal that was to secure it so we knew we were already in a good place and the last attempt was to secure the gold medal Mm. and um you know we we left it up to god to decide but i i know that i knew that all our hard work and preparation the team just had the full confidence and when Heidi cleaned it, I already knew immediately that she would jerk it because she's yeah. that type of athlete. I, mm. I know how she is. Yes. So it was just, um, I think with the team, we were just so mesmerized um, with how much we've, we've um, endured and how much we've, we've gone through. And just seeing Heidi and Lynn lift that weight was just the indicator that we you know we secure we leave it all up to god and she was able to lift the weight of the world with that weight. Mm. Cheska, if may may yeah, ask a follow up for yeah. for, for for Heidi if i may ask a follow up Heidi sabi mo nga uh, sa mga ibang interview that you've never uh lifted that weight before at least a clean and jerk sa 127 tapos first time mo siya nagawa parang wow pa- pa- paano nangyari yun di ba it's not like in basketball or volleyball na hindi mo nagawa yung play pero ito literal capacity mo eh di ba parang Take, can you take us through that? Um, natry ko uh, magbuhat ng 127, pero nananaig yung takot sa training kasi sabi ko, eh paano pag may injury ako, may, may injury ako dito, eh wala nang Olympic. So, ayun, hindi ko siya natatry kasi sobrang takot ako. Pero nung larong yun, yung day na yun, July 26, hindi ko makalimutan yung date, no? <laughs> July 26, um, Sinurender ko kay God yung takot. Buti, buti na lang nandyan ang Team HD na niremind sa akin na Heights, you're prepared, you're prepared. And nandun si Coach Julius na together with Coach Gao nag-strategy nung laro. So iniisip ko lang talaga yung technique ko. And um, tapos pinaparemind sa akin na may mga taong nag-pray sa akin with this miraculous model na panatag ako na magagawa ko yun. So, nung nandun na sa stage, inisip ko lang na one motion, one motion, one motion. Inisip ko yung technique ko, nagawa ko. Kung narinig niyo yung laro, one motion, one motion, one motion. Yun ang sinasabi ko. Then, nashock din ako eh. Naitayo ko. Hmm. Gagawin, nashock ako. Tapos nung dito, medyo may doubt ako. Konti, sabi ko, hindi. One motion. So, sa buhat ko, medyo diba, pag ganun ako, pero pinigilan ko talaga. Thank God at nagawa ko. At, I mean, akala ko imposible. Pero nung day na yun, posible pala. Lahat ng pangarap na ibibigay natin kay God, surrender natin. As long as we do our best and we um, surrender it to Him. I I love that, um, you know, earlier Coach Julius mentioned that you lifted it all up to God. Heidi, uh, you keep talking about people na may nagdadasal sa'yo, the people who pray for you. Um, when it comes to Team HD, uh, for Coach Julius or for you, Heidi, was there a particular Bible verse that kept you going? Um, I can do all things through Christ. Philippians 4.13? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. Coach Julius? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, when you see... no, Okay, so obviously... Every athlete entering the Olympics, they're physically prepared. You have to be mentally and emotionally prepared. But when you see Heidelin, um, you know, the kind of faith that she has, the kind of preparation that she has, and the kind of people she has that surround her, um, what, what else could she have had that made the difference? 
on that day she got the gold i think it was the 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 pendant she had or the um, she had this uh pendant or or um what is it yeah it was a pendant on her necklace that she, she told me to wear it because she wanted to to hold it in the competition and because i told her i kept repeating to her this is everyone's prayers for you hold the pendant uh you know touch it so you can get the strength from god and uh, really i think it's 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 also just the fact that she wanted it more um she she left it all on us the coaches to really um do her attempts um and everything just clicked from the nutrition with with uh um coach Jeanette to the psychology with Doc Karen Trinidad and just the team in itself because the last two to three years is has really been uh, making this team cohesive making this team um, this core team very uh, strong and coach Gao's uh, technical um, help and also some of the strategic help really help us get through all of the challenges that our opponents were trying to throw at us and I think what Heidi had was just that focus, that that strength, that supernatural strength. For I mean, she was the el- she was the oldest athlete on that in the in the Olympics for her category. You know, everyone else is at least three to four years or even five years younger. I think there was one that was six or seven years younger, and it showed that her experience and everything she's gone through, she was able to make everyone in that in that forum cry, just because yeah. they know how much she's endured through her um, 19 year Olympic weightlifting career. Mm. And also for context to our viewers, Heidelin's, this is Heidelin's fourth Olympics. The first two mm-hmm. uh, were not ideal. Um, I, I believe you Una Una Heidi, you finished one of the last place. 2012, you did not finish. They did eventually pataas ng ladder. Rio 2016 was silver. silver. And then ito na nga, gold. Uh, pero Heidi, um, para siyempre, para sa viewers natin, baka pwede mo pakita yung gold medal mo. Ay, yes. Okay lang ba? Yan. Yan, that's the chip. Mabigat. Mabigat. Parehas Mabigat. din ng, ng silver medal ng Rio. Mabigat. Hmm. Sige na ng bigat. Pero siyempre, iba yung kulay ngayon. Mas... Iba yung kulay. <laughs> Parehas naman uh, importante sa buhay ko. Pero yes. mas kailangan natin ito ngayon. Tama, tama. Ang uh, curious ako, Heidi, when we talk about Team HD, uh, kasi pinag-usapan natin Team HD ngayon eh, paano ba siya nabuo? Uh, pieces ba yan? O may ina point? Ikaw ang namili? Paano naging proseso na? Uh, sa totoo lang, nung una, may Team HD na iba yung member. Um, uh, nung unang coach ko sa strength and conditioning coach, si Sir J. Putalan, yung weightlifting coach ko si Antonio Junior uh, Antonio Agustin Junior and si Doc Karen nandiyan na si Ma'am Jeanette Aro nandiyan na um, later on syempre ang daming nangyari naging coach ko si Coach Julius noong 2018 nung umalis si Coach uh, J sa Philippine Sports Commission so, si Coach Julius ang naging coach ko. Siyempre, nung una, hindi naging madali sa kanya. Kasi talagang hirap i-please ang isang uh, elite athlete. Ako kahit, di ba? <laughs> Mahirap i-please ang isang elite athlete. Napakataas ng standard. Siyempre, si Coach Gao, naging coach ko noong 2018, uh, before ng Asian Games. Um, may record siya as a coach. So, ayun. Um, uh, pinagkakatiwalaan ko siya sa weightlifting technique. Si Ma'am Jeanette, naging coach ko siya noong 2017, noong before ng IMAG. Um, noong una, syempre, ganun din kay Coach Julius. Hindi ako naniniwala. Ah, sumusunod ako minsan, pero kumakain ako kahit ano, lumalabas. Kasi nasa Pilipinas ako eh. Lalabas ako, kakain ako with the friends and masarap kumain. Pero noong, noong pandemic, um, nung nasa Malaka na kami, wala akong choice kung hindi sumunod sa pagkain na uh, binibigay niya. Kasi nga malayo kami sa probinsya, malayo sa... Um, o, amin ka, sumusunod ako, pero hindi parate. May mga parang pag one, uh, one week, once a week, mga three days yung cheat day ko. <laughs> so, 
pag sabi ko um pag stress ako hindi ako kakain ng uh, kakain ako na masarap pag st- kakain talaga ako ng marami pero nung before ng Asian Championship sumunod talaga ako kasi ko hindi kailangan ko tong gawin so naging maganda yung Asian Championship yung pek ay uh, yung body weight ko tapos hanggang sa na pattern yun para sa Olympics Tapos si Doc Karen, um, pupunta-punta ko sa kanya dati, um, 2016. Pero syempre, takes a lot of time para makuha yung tiwala ko. So hanggang sa 2017, kasama ko siya sa isang laro. Pero hindi ako yung regular parating nag, nag-session sa sports psychologist. Hindi, hindi ako ganun. <laughs> um, kasi nung Asian Championship, ayun, Asian Championship, hindi naging maganda ang laro ko. Di ba, fourth ako nung Asian Championship. So, nung fourth ako nung Asian Championship, sabi ko, kasi akala ko prepared na ako, ready na ako. Eh, nung pagpunta ko doon sa, doon sa, hindi ko nagawa ng maayos doon sa Asia, Uzbekistan. Hindi ko nagawa ng maayos dahil kinabahan ako, hindi ako prepared mentally. Kaya nun, blessing in disguise na natalo ako ng Asian Championship. Kasi lesson yun para sa amin as a team, kahit si Coach Julius, marami din natutunan ng Asian Championship. Ako din ang dami kasi hindi ko sinusunod dati si Julius na Coach Julius yung training niya. Na, kasi binago niya yung strength program ko nung December. Okay, ginagawa ko. Ginagawa ko. Pero mga weeks before ng laro, sa ko, bakit po papatayin sarili ko sa training? Eh, ngayon, na-realize ko, kaya kong talun after nun, kaya kong talunin yung China, kaya kong talunin lahat. Kaya lang, hindi ko ginagawa yung best ko sa training. So, after Asian Championship, ginawa ko yung best ko sa training everyday. Nag-session ako kay Doc Karen every week. Um, may yoga ako, may PT consultation ako from friends sa, sa US. Sumunod ako sa program ni Julius na patayan talaga, as in patayan talaga na miiyak-iyak ako. Tapos sinusunod ko ulit yung training uh, meal plan ni Coach Coach Jeanette. So, yeah, sila. Sila ang likod nun. Ang galing nila. Coach Julius, I mean, we, we heard it from Heidi herself na it took a while for her to buy into your program to, to start actually taking your advice. What did it take to get her to finally start following your program and to trust uh, the science or trust the ideas that you had for her? Um, you know, I think, I think with, and, um, when, I, when I studied um, exercise science back home in Guam, um, my curriculum fortunately um, had psychology. Um, so I took a lot of high level psychology courses because it allowed me to really um, work with the mental capacities of the athlete. So I, uh, I knew that it was going to take time. And, you know, when you work with elite athletes who've been in the sport for many, many years, it's going to be very, very hard to implement new types of training, especially if, the, if they've been doing the same thing for so many years. So um, to get past that plateau, I had to really slowly implement the program, but also be patient and understand that she's probably going to get frustrated and question everything I, I throw at her. But, you know, that's part of the game. That's part of um, what it takes to really earn the trust of your athletes. It's not just a you do this, you do that. It's, um, you know, I think we can do this. Let's see how it goes. Let's test and assess. And that's that's really what it is. It's it's um, with, with just uh, weightlifting in general with strength and conditioning. Um, it's really about testing what works and, you know, assessing if it does or, or not. And then you continue to test and assess and then you, you continue to implement it as part of the program. Mm. Yeah. Coach Julius, was uh, there also like a big celebration in Guam back home? Many Filipinos also in Guam, also your victory uh, as, as, as a trainer, as a coach. What was it like uh, during those moments? Uh, you know, you know I, I didn't expect it um, that Guam would, would highlight it. But, you know, I am, I am um, you know, I'm Filipino by blood. I'm Japanese by blood, but I am Guamanian. I was born and raised in Guam. My parents live in Guam. So I think, you know, just being raised with, this, the, with the, the culture and also just um, having, you know, 
the island pride and just um, understanding where I came from, a small island in the Pacific Ocean, um, to be able to be on the main stage. I think Guam takes pride in that because I am, um, I was born and raised there. I got my college education there and I became, a, um, a, that's where I was raised. And so I think, I think for me, it was all surprising. I didn't expect it, but um, it's great to know that, um, you know, it's great to know that our island would get a little bit of recognition, but also, you know, it's, it's, I, I did this for the Philippines. I did this for, for Guam because it represents where I came from. And I just, um, it's, it's all just very surprising. And um, I'm excited that, to know that, you know, my, my, my home recognizes it. All right. Thank you, Coach Julius. Heidi, um, this uh, earlier na banggit mo na tanggap mo na nagsettle in na that you have a gold medal, the responsibilities, everything that comes along with it. So now, what's next for Heidi Lindias? Um, what's next? Um, uh, training pa rin ako. Hmm. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, kasi as an athlete, we don't stop na mananalo, then stop na. Um, hindi kami ganun. Um, kasi ginagawa ko ito, ang weightlifting because mahal ko ang weightlifting. Then, mahal ko ang Pilipinas. Eh, naniniwala ko, kaya ko pa rin. So, maglalaro ako for World Championship, tapos Sea Games, then Asian Games, then assess kung kaya pa ba ng katawan, kaya pa ba para sa um, Paris, kung ano yung um, kung paano yung ano to, yung yung qualifying para sa Olympics. Then, next, siguro kung bibigyan ako ng pagkakataon, baka magkakaroon ng project na train with Heidelin Diaz na para ma, ma, makita at para may susunod sa akin na weightlifter na man, yeah. mananalo sa Olympics. Then, next, sana may diploma na ako sa uh, College of St. Benil kasi syempre, um, next stop ako tapos ilang terms na lang din and hopefully magawa ko ang mga thesis. Mm-hmm. All right. So syempre shout out of course to CSB shout out sa lahat ng mga sumusuporta uh, kay Hayden and DS. And speaking of shout out, we've actually gathered a couple of questions from our friends na talagang uh, you know went went to a blissful state, 'di ba? Buong Pilipinas na when Hayden won that gold. Unang-una, uh, from Dino Lee. Actually Dino Lee, I have a couple of questions for Dino Lee because Dino and the Heidi gained the friendship no pandemic. And uh, I messaged him, sabi, you know, for HD, I'm sure there have been a lot of great moments and experiences, but what is something that you will cherish the most? Um, siguro yung i-cherish ko, ay i-cherish ko yung time ng 127. Kasi yun yung time na naniniwala ako sa sarili ko. Yun yung time na naniniwala ako sa people behind me and naniniwala ako kay God na Ito yung best thing ko. Ito yung binigay niya plano para sa akin at sa puso ko. Mm. Uh, follow-up question on that. Uh, kasi nakita ko yung post ni Dino eh. Uh, for, uh, shout out Dino and for the love of the game. And uh, you actually wanted to beef up on your accounting skills. Yes. Uh, uh, nag, uh, nagpaturo ka sa <laughs> accounting, di ba? Nagpaturo ako sa kanya sa accounting kasi medyo nahirapan ako sa accounting. Ang hirap intindihin. Kasi online classes yun. <laughs> So, ang hirap i-balance, ang hirap buti na lang may mga taong nagtuturo sa akin kagaya ni Dino. Yan. Kamusta naman yung pagtuturo ni Dino? Okay naman? <laughs> okay naman. Natulungan niya ako. Natulung- naipas ako. Nairaos ko ang accounting. Yes. Congratulations. Uh, for, uh, same also, Coach Julius, for from Dino Lee. Uh, Coach Julius, I'll put you on the spotlight. For Coach Julius, what did you learn about yourself in your biggest takeaway journey with Heidi? In Team HD and representing the Philippines. Um, I think I think what I learned most was um, that we can get through some of the toughest experience. Um, you know, the pandemic was never an easy thing to go through. It's we're still going through it as we speak, but it made me more. Um, it made me realize how important this journey was, because. You know we've had to go through these hard times and it, it also reminded me that i need to to be a good example for the future generation i need to be a good influence to to um the people who look up to us to to look up to heidi you know i need to also um re- remind myself that look you know 
um, during that that journey, you know, there's so many times where we felt like, you know, should we continue? You know, like there, there's there's many times we had doubt, but we realized that, you know, we're being put through this test for a reason, and I think that's that's one of the most, um, I think that's one of the biggest takeaways from from all of this. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Heidi from Robin Gut Tan, thank you, Lang, for being a great role model and a champion to young Filipino girls. We're so proud to have. Her as Philippines' first gold medalist. And tanong naman ni Alvin Morelos, 13 years of Olympic level training, how hard is it to be committed to the journey? Um, sobrang mahirap. Pero at the end of the day, tinatanong ko lang sarili ko, bakit ko to ginagawa? Dahil mahal ko ang ginagawa ko. Hmm. Tanong naman ni Paul Loyola, what's your plan with all the rewards and incentives na nabigay kay Heidi and oh. TVHD? <laughs> um, sa lahat ng nag-pledge, siyempre eh, nagpapasalamat ako doon. Pero again, um, hindi kasi kami as a team, hindi kami masyadong focus sa reward. Mas focus kami sa pagbibigay ng pag-asa, inspiration, um, yung pagiging proud as Pilipino. At ma-reach ma namin yung dream namin. As a team, dream natin as Pilipino. Tapos yung yung never ever give up na attitude as a Filipino. Yun yung um, gusto ko i-highlight. Hindi lang yung, alam mo yung material things. At gusto ko lang sabihin na uh, thankful ako na kahit na may incentives or mga awards, thankful ako doon. Pero thankful ako may mga taong nag-guide sa akin. Like Team HD and Sir Noel and mga prayer warriors ko na tinutulungan ako na paano i-handle ang mga ganito. Hmm. Check. Do you have a follow-up question? Yeah, I actually, kanina kasi Heidi already mentioned na um, iniisip mo na rin yung future generations of athletes, yung mga pwedeng maturuan uh, sa weightlifting and all of that. And I'm glad you brought that up because um, you are very vocal. Uh, about the things that you need, about the things that you want to accomplish, and nagawa mo na lahat. You've reached the pinnacle uh, of this. You you've proven that you are the best in the world. So sa lahat na pinagdaanan mo sa 13 years na uh, yun ang kakabang, kakabanggit lang for the future generation of athletes na gustong sumunod sa yapak ni Haydelin Diaz. Ano ang mga bagay na gusto mong may experience din nila? na na-experience mo and ano yung mga bagay na sana wag nilang pagdaanan yung mga ibang pinagdaanan mo? Uh, siguro yung mga bagay na gusto kong ma-experience sila, syempre manalo. Pero gusto ko rin sabihin na hindi lang yan manalo eh. Kailangan mong mag-work hard talaga sa gusto mong pangarap. And sana ma-experience din nila magkaroon ng team kasi hindi mo ma-achieve yan kung ikaw lang mag-isa. You really need people behind you. And syempre, kailangan mo sigat dyan. Mm -hmm. Coach Julius, uh, I have a question also, a follow-up question, maybe off the weightlifting uh, questions and maybe just a side note. Of course, uh, Coach Julius and Heidi are in a relationship. How do you um, maybe compartmentalize your coach and then at the same time when you're off the, off, off the training how does how how does that go? I um, mean, you know, like we've, I think we've had a lot of lessons learned. Um, it, it wasn't easy at first, but um, we really grew a lot, um, and we understood the importance of, you know, keeping it professional. Um, you know, not a lot of people agree with with a uh, coach athlete relationship. Actually, in fact, it's very taboo. But um, you know, we wanted to 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 make it. Um, a point that look, it's it's doable. I mean, there are you know, if, if there are father son, uh, coach athlete relationship, I think there can be in that sense a, a couple relationship. But of course, we need to. Um, there's a lot of weight on our shoulders to ensure that we keep that professionalism there. So it took a lot of um, learning, and it took a lot of you know, a lot of growing pains to get to to this professionalism. But we understood that look, there's 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 more than. You know what we were trying to achieve was more than what you know our current relationship was so we knew that we had to set us we had to make sacrifices um in order to um get gain the bigger goal right mm -hmm. and i think i think that's where we learned like 
we can compartmentalize a little bit easier because we were able to understand what our goals were. We had the same goals, we understood what, what we needed to accomplish and it made it easier for us on the relationship aspect. So the professionalism was able to really mold itself. Heidi, thoughts on that? Yeah, um, alam kong nahirapan siya sa akin. Masyado akong, <laughs> masyadong mataas ang standard ko. Lahat ata ng, ng member ng Team HD, kailangan nilang, alam mo yun, nag-adapt sila and nag, um, naghanap ng paraan para ma, ma-reach din yung, kasi ito yung pangarap ko, then ito, ito yung standard ko, pinatry nilang ma, mas mataas yung knowledge nila. So, yeah, um, thankful ako sa kanya kasi lahat ng role kinuha na niya. Mapadriver, cook, <laughs> so, um, lahat, lahat yan. Um, siya ang lahat gumawa nun and naging magaan kasi nandyan siya. Thank you so much, Coach Julius. All right. Of course, we know that you guys are so busy. Marami pa kayong kailangan gawin at may mga interviews din kayo. May laban din si Yumir. So, um, before we let you go, uh, any messages to the people, to everyone who supported you, who cheered for you, who cried for you, who prayed for you? Uh, Coach Julius, do you want to go first? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, I want to... Uh, maraming, maraming salamat po uh, sa support that. Uh, thank you for believing in Team HD and really putting us in your prayers. Uh, we really wanted to represent the country. I wanted to, you know, represent my fatherland and be able to just um, just put sports science on the map and just to to really um, be proud and uh, as a Filipino. Thank you so much, mm-hmm. really, for the support. We we really um, we really appreciate it, and we're very grateful. Just my last question, uh, papahabol lang ako. Actually, Coach Julie, if, if, if you could answer this. Um, this is from Andrew Mediana. Um, I, maybe you've answered this or maybe encountered this question uh, maybe previously. In a, in a New York Times article, Monica Puenteveles said that you intentionally held back to settle for fourth place at the Asian Championship in order to make the Chinese think that you had reached your full potential. Can you talk more about this genius game plan? What are your reactions to that? <laughs> uh, well, I think with with weightlifting, it's a game of probabilities. A lot of people don't understand the chess game that goes in the back, um, the mm-hmm. backroom strategy. No, not many people really understand it because we only see what happens on the platform and the athlete. And I think, um, I guess, I guess um, you can you can put it that way. Um, but also, you know, uh, sometimes things don't go according to plan. You know, yeah. but at the same time, things can go according to plan, if that makes sense. So right. um, the best way I would put it is, um, you know, we're not here to to take anything away from our opponents. Um, you know, every competition, they go out to fight. It's a matter of probabilities. Someday you have it, someday you don't. Right. And I think like the whole concept of the strategy for the Asian Asian championships, I think we all the, the, the competitors in, in us always want the best results, right? Um, but like I mentioned, things don't go according to plan. And I guess it's safe to say that that may have been um, the reason for it. Or I can also say that it was just a probability cause, just the fact mm-hmm. that it, it could or could not happen. That's the best way and I can al- answer that. And also, if you would relate it to basketball just or maybe other team sports, it may just be part of the game, breaks of the game, even that led... To this moment Heidi lastly your message and uh, your message to our viewers in Chempre uh, sa Filipino people um gusto ko lang sabihin sa lahat ng mga Pilipino ito na po ang gold medal na kaya ko na kaya kong dalhin ng gold medal sa Olympics kaya natin lahat ng to basta wag tayong sumuko kasi nasa kahit nasa na tayo pandemya wag sumuko sa pangarap natin at sa sarili natin kayang-kaya natin ito at uh, gusto ko lang sabihin na um, continue. Continue natin ipag-pray ang mga Pilipino athletes um, na maglalaro sa naglalaro sa um, Tokyo 2020. Maraming maraming salamat po sa support ang binigay nyo. Kayang-kaya natin ito. Huwag tayong sumuko. Heidi, ano reaction mo? Nesty Petesho with a shot at goal. 
Siyempre, sobrang saya ako para kay Nesty. At, <laughs> um, alam nila yan na as an ate, sobrang saya ako na may um, Nesty Patesyo na maglalaro for gold medal. And nandun, pa rin, nandun ako manonood ng laban niya. Um, alam nila yan, susuportahan ko sila. Fan ako ng mga Pilipino atlet. Alright. Jessica? Thank you so much, uh, Heidelin. Thank you so much, Coach Julius. And we know na hindi lang kami ni Migs yung laging umiiyak every time we see our athletes uh, on the world stage. So salamat sa lahat ng ginawa nyo. Sa lahat, uh, thank you so much for representing the Philippines and for representing the Philippines so well. Um, thank you for taking the time to join us. Again, alam namin pagod na pagod na kayo sa mga interviews and you guys still have so much to do. And we wish you nothing but the best moving forward. Uh, hopefully, we have you guys back on the show one of these days. And Sana, thank you. Thank you so much, Heidelin Diaz, Coach Julius Serrano. Just want to say thank you, of course, special shout out to Noel Ferrer, of course, for arranging yes. this interview. Noel, Coach thank Julius, you. thank you so much. And of course, uh, bumabati po kami sa Team HD at uh, sa lahat. Uh, lahat ng responsable para sa victory ni Heidelin Diaz at Team HD. So there you have it. This is our episode with Heidelin Diaz and Coach Julius Tarano. We'll be back right after a short break. All right. Thank you so much, Heidelin. Thank you so much.